All right, so the mistake that a lot of biomedical PhDs make is think that the only way they're going to get a job after graduation is if they stay in the research track and pursue academic research, okay? This is what a lot of biomedical PhDs think. And at some point in my PhD program and in my career, actually, I began to ask myself, are there any other careers out there besides pursuing academic research? And there are so many exciting opportunities, my friend. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of those paths that you can pursue as a biomedical PhD after you're done with school. Hey there, I'm Dr. Gertrude Nontra and on this channel, I give career and personal development tips to women who wanna pursue careers in the biomedical sciences. If that is you, then consider hitting that subscribe button to join this community. Okay, so like I said, there's so many exciting paths that you can pursue as a biomedical PhD. The first path is a quite a common path, but it still doesn't involve research, and that is becoming a professor, just a teaching professor at a university you, where you don't have to do research. There are those positions. Now, I will say those positions can be hard to come by if you did not do any teaching at all in your PhD. So this happened to me where, you know, in my PhD, I did my PhD in a medical school and we weren't given teaching assistantships to teach anybody because you we're, we're not going to teach the med students and we weren't necessarily um, allowed to teach on the main campus. So we didn't have that experience. Um, and because of that, I mean, compare that to a friend of mine who did do her PhD. We did our PhDs around the same time, but she had a teaching assistantship where she was able to teach undergraduate students. And because she had that opportunity to teach undergraduate students, when it came to finding a teaching job, it was much easier for her, whereas it was a little harder for me. Eventually, I did get an adjunct faculty position at a community college, but she was able to navigate that much easier. So if you do want to go into teaching, you have to think about getting some teaching experience whilst you are in school um whether that is you know asking your pi whether you can um you know you can you can do some lectures or maybe go teach at the university portion some undergrads whatever that looks like for you look for those opportunities to teach so that it can help you find those positions another downside to teaching is that generally not always but generally the compensation is not as great as some of the other professions that i'm going to mention later on down the line but for me teaching is perfect because i do enjoy teaching i love to talk i love to explain things even when nobody has asked me so um teaching is great for me the salary is okay for me for now and so you know i'm in it um, but there are other paths that you can pursue as well. Another path that you can pursue as a biomedical PhD is to become a medical or science writer. Becoming a medical or science writer is also another path that if you want to get into, I recommend that you start preparing for it before you graduate. And so, you know, this may look for you, that may look like um, learning the, about the different types of medical writing there is. Perhaps it looks like um, finding some medical writers in your local area and doing some kind of informational interviews with them. I did that. Um, because I do do freelance writing um, in the health industry. It's not quite medical or science writing. They, they're little, the definitions are a little different. I guess I'd be closer a little bit to science writing because I do write for, you know, scientific based articles for healthcare companies. So that's my other um, source of income. So you really have to think about gaining these experiences and also maybe you know just learning about the whole world of medical writing because it is a well compensated profession the last i looked there was a survey by the american medical writers association and i think that the average salary reported was somewhere around a hundred and five thousand dollars so it really is a well compensated profession and so you know if you wanted to pursue that and you enjoy writing um you know writing about science and teaching, educating about science. This is another 
area that you can look into. Path that's also super exciting is one known as a field applications scientist. Now, if you work in the lab, then you've met some of these people, right? They leave their cards in the lab. They tell you to call them if you have any problem with, you know, your solutions, with your media, with your machines, equipment that you have, your pipettes. You have met some of these people. They go under different names depending on the company, but sometimes you'll hear them be, uh, be called field application scientists. Some of them are called technical application scientists. And essentially they know a lot about that product. They've been specially trained on that product. And usually a lot of them also hold biomedical PhDs. Because they've done research in the lab, they will have a good understanding of the different applications. And when you're talking to them about what you need, a piece of equipment or lab supply for, they have a better scientific understanding. So most of the time, people in those field and technical um, application scientist roles tend to be PhDs. This is another really well compensated role. Um, I'll, I'll look up the average salary and put it right here so that you can check out another great profession. The thing about field application scientists and, and, the, and the other one I mentioned, technical application scientists, is that they tend to travel a lot because usually they'll hire a, a, a field application scientist for a specific area. And when they hire you, let's say you live in New York City and you're the field application scientist for a particular biotech company. And again, these usually work with biotech companies that produce the lab equipment and produce lab supplies and, and stuff like that. And these individuals will travel to different research institutions and, you know, interface with the research researchers there uh, about the particular um, piece of equipment or lab supply that it is that they represent. And so it is a great one. So there's a lot of travel involved. Um, the, the great thing about field application scientists and, and these kind of roles is that you do get paid an allowance for your car. For some companies, they'll provide allowance for your car. They'll provide, like, they'll comp your meals and travel expenses, which means that after you've traveled to a place, after you've eaten at the place, as long as you bring the receipts back, you will be given the money back um, if it is company business, of course. And so it ends up being really welcome because it's essentially you're not spending your money on the travel and you're not spending your money on um, on the food um, that you go when you're on when you're on business, of course. And so it ends up being really great because with other jobs, like when you're paid a salary, nobody comes you for anything like you spend your salary on your lunches and you spend your salary on the gas that you put in your car. But working in these field positions, you can get compensated in, in with certain biotech companies in that way. Another role that I personally find exciting is one called medical science liaison. Now, these people are basically the ballers. <laughs> of biomedical science careers, to be honest with you. Um, them and the other one I'm, go I'm gonna mention after this. Medical science liaisons typically work within pharmaceutical companies. And so these individuals will um, interface or interact with what are known as key opinion leaders. These are researchers in specific fields. Um, so for instance, if the uh, medical science liaison works in, let's say, a, a company where they produce medicines for cancer, they're going to find people that do cancer research to do maybe some clinical trials and some trials with their drugs, right, so that they can actually have the drug approved. So medical science liaisons will present what the drug is, how they want to work with these researchers. They have to build relationships with these key opinion leaders. They have to nurture those relationships. So like the, like the name suggests, they really are the liaison between the pharmaceutical company and the researcher. So they're really integral part because without these pharma without these medical science liaisons, pharmaceutical companies would not be able to get their drugs through the clinical trial process, right? And so it's absolutely important for them to be there to interface or to interact with these you know, key opinion leaders or key researchers so that the clinical trials and then you know, drug testing can go on. And 
average salary for medical science liaisons right here right here again I said they ball okay and um, again this is one of those jobs that is super competitive to get into one of the things that the drawbacks for me with the medical science liaison is like like the field application scientists they travel a lot okay they travel a lot and for me as a mom and as a wife that's just impractical for me so um you know for now that my child is still small and uh, you know i think that that's just something that i will avoid doing because it does involve a lot of travel and, and a lot of sacrifice in a way of, from, away from your family because again like the field, field position i told you about you will be covering an area sometimes you're covering multiple states for the company so perhaps somebody who is a um, an MSL for a, co a pharmaceutical company may be covering California and Arizona and Nevada, right? These are states that are close to each other. And so they'll be traveling to these states all the time, every day, all week um, for meetings and stuff like that. So it does involve a lot of travel and, and you, d you do get comped for all these things, have a computer to work at home and all that. So it's another great path to pursue. If you don't mind travel, if you don't mind the money, definitely a great path to pursue. This last path I haven't really researched into and so I won't go into detail into it except to say it is a potential path for you to pursue so just know that okay and it is consulting. So you could go into consulting um, as a biomedical scientist as well. There are companies out there that will be happy to have you on as a consultant, consulting on various subjects. Again, it's not something that I've looked deeply into, but it could be health policy, it could be you know drug policies, it could be it could be anything that you're consulting on. But usually, it's related to whatever it is that you studied. So one of the things to remember as you look for jobs is to realize that as a PhD, you are a highly trained individual, not just in your field. And I think that's a mistake a lot of us make. We say, well, I have a PhD in microbiology and immunology, or I have a PhD in this. And so that's the only path that I can pursue. But the truth is that as a PhD, you learned problem solving, you learned how to write, you learned how to um, put complex thoughts, how to um, synthesize complex, complex thoughts and put those together. You learned how to communicate. And so all of these, you know, kind of soft skills and some of them are hard skills too, really can be things that you highlight on your CV or resume when you are applying for jobs. So don't be afraid to really let yourself shine. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, you know the deal. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it to join our community.